Hi, Tom Coe, the coach for Steve Taylor Community Star. We've got a great show for you today. We got the boss, Mr. Steve Taylor. We've got Mr. Brad Rieger, a community legend, and Supercross. Brad, uh, you know, every been the talk of the office. I, I sent everybody your resume, and I know you're a humble guy, and I, you know, you probably don't want to talk about that stuff, but I got to tell you, the body of work that you have collected in giving back in the community, superintendent at Sylvania School, superintendent at Springfield, teacher, assistant principal, special education, you know, all the boards you're on, everything, all the writing things that you've done. Does it ever, you ever look back at that and go, God, I'm kind of tired. I mean, it was an amazing, it's an amazing resume. No, you know, I, I, I enjoy connecting with people and serving people. And I think that's one of my focus, whatever I'm doing, that's, that's what I'm about. And I've been surrounded with great people. People have helped me along the way. I'm here because of so many people right. contributing to my life. And it feels good to just, return the favor, right? Whenever we can. Yes, sure, yes, 100%. Yes, yes. Well, you definitely have returned the favor. Like Tom said, we were all in awe. Oh my God. Uh, looking at, uh, you know, your background and what you've done. Let's talk a little bit about education because obviously you've, you've done a little bit of everything in education, uh, a lot here in Northwest Ohio, like Tom said, Sylvania and Springfield. What do you think is going on currently with the education system? But what do you think is going on right now, just as an overview from someone who's been in this for so long? You know, when I drive by any school, any school district, whether public, private, I just hope there's great things going on in those schools right, for right. the young kids because there's there's not a more important job than uh, being an educator. Absolutely. Because uh, young people's lives are put on a certain trajectory based on what's going on in, in school. Right. Uh, having said that, there's never been a tougher time yeah. uh, to be in education. Uh, COVID really changed a lot of things. Right and school districts really haven't recovered in many ways. So the challenges continue to be there. You know, one of the things that I enjoyed the most being a superintendent or the principal was just being in classrooms and seeing the great things, the achievements, the efforts of kids and staff, that really inspired me. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to be cheerleading and I was doing that, but they really inspired me and I, and I miss it. And the, just the acts of kindness that go on in school, I mean, there's, there's issues and challenges, but there's hundreds of great things that are happening in every school across this country. That's such a good point. I think so often those get overlooked, right? right. And it's, you know, it's actually just a, a shadow of what happens in our society today yes. where there's so much of the, the negative news yes. is what's right. brought out. But I, I love what you said about all the great acts of kindness that go on. And you talk to even my kids on a daily basis and we say, you know, tell me about something good that happened today. And it's pretty easy for them to talk about something or yeah. someone, you know, that, that did something nice. So I think it's the so other, important. I'm sorry, Steve. Yeah. The other piece is that our world is changing so mm -hmm. quickly. Yes. Uh, the challenge is what type of skills and experiences do you give young people to prepare them going right. forward? It is right. changing so quickly. It is. It's, it's yeah. difficult for universities and for K-12 institutions yes. to, yeah. to keep the curriculum relevant and experiences relevant. You know, the, the AI piece, I mean, from a marketing industry that I'm yes. in now, it is rocketing the industry. <laughs> right. But it's that's that impact is everywhere. And so very much like the calculator or Google Maps. Yes. Right. It, this AI revolution is, it's, it's going to be uh, transformative. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I saw um, Gary Vaynerchuk, who a lot of people know, Gary V, he's a big social media influencer, started out with, the, I believe, his wine website. Yeah. Um, but he said someone approached him and got mad at him because he embraced AI and thought, right. you know, that, like you're saying, it's, uh, it's going to change things. And mm -hmm. he said, think about back in the turn of the century that everybody had a tractor. Yeah. And he talked about farmers and how, you know, 80% of the population, they were all farmers. And he said, well, think about what happened when the tractor came out right. and what it did for, for the better. Right. Sure, it's a little scary right now talking about AI, yeah, yeah. but I think, you know, if, if people embrace it and look at what it could do, it's not just going to take away jobs, but maybe it could add to them. So, yes. yeah, good point, good point. I am probably your number one advocate and fan on LinkedIn. I follow <laughs> all of your all of your podcasts in the arena, and they are such excellent uh, interviews. You know, they, they're interesting, they're engaging. You are actually teaching the world different things on different subjects when, when you do these podcasts. So I wanted to ask you. That's very kind. Thank yes, you. yes. What actually drives you? What's your passion? Why do you have your guests on your podcast? 
what are you actually trying to achieve? What are you trying to bring out of them? Uh, well, first of all, if you have, if you and I sit down and have a conversation right. for an hour, uh, we're going to find things out about your life that really resonate with me. I find interesting. I find inspirational. Right. Same with Steve. Same with Tom. Because we're all on this journey together. Just. I have a curiosity of how people approach life and how they navigate life and also the decision the inflection points in their life that got them to the point where they're sitting across from me and we're talking about their leadership role mm -hmm. and i think leaders have a unique story to tell yes and um i i'm not an expert on leadership but i've had a lot of experience through athletics through my k-12 experience right. in the private sector in the, in the board work that i've done so I'm always interested in people telling me how they navigate things. One of the most influential conferences I went to was at Ohio State, and it was 2011 or 10, it was Superintendent's Conference, and Gordon Gee was the president. Wow. And, you know, Gordon Gee is very flamboyant. Yep. Sure. So we were all there thinking it's gonna be real, um, you know, fun and better. Right, right. So he gets up there and says, I'm gonna tell you the five biggest mistakes I've made in my life. Hmm. And he goes through and starts saying those and the vulnerability yeah. that he shared and that was transformative for me. So part of the idea of the podcast mm -hmm. is to allow people to put a spotlight on the great works they're doing yes. and who they are, but also allow them to share and a little bit the, and the, the, hu the right. human side yes. of, their, of, of leadership. Right, right. Fantastic. You know, Brad, uh, Cross mentioned your great podcast. I think it's called In the Arena, and I'm assuming you can get it wherever podcasts are, yep. are available, uh, which is very cool. We should also tell folks you're the CEO of Cooper Smith, which we didn't mention. But I'd like to talk about a little bit athletically. You lettered four years at the University of Toledo. That's very difficult to do. I mean, it's difficult to do. And uh, you played on some really good teams. But I find in athletics, you usually pull or extract something that, out of that experience that you learned about yourself that changed you and helped you be so successful as you have been and continue to be, what would that be, Brad? We did, uh, Tom played on some great teams. We won two MAC championships. We played the NCAA tournament. We did NIT yeah. twice. And wow. I was a captain our senior year. I started my sophomore year, but I, then I came off the bench. And so I had a modest individual career. My GPA was higher than my scoring average. <laughs> That's a great line, Brad, by the way. Problematic, <laughs> problem, but it worked out uh, right. later on. But I think Coach Nichols was, uh, uh, he's a Hall of Fame coach. Yes. And uh, my senior year, we were playing up at Central Michigan and Melvin McLaughlin was probably the, the leading scorer in the MAC, mm -hmm. and we were up by one point with six seconds to go, and I was guarding Melvin McLaughlin. Mm -hmm. And Coach Nichols spent the whole time out telling me how to guard. <laughs> and I went out there, and for some reason, I didn't follow that direction. I tried yeah. to push him off in the quarter. Of course, he got the ball and scored, and they won the game to carry the ball. So Coach Nichols didn't say anything until the next day, and it was before practice, and he pulled me over, and he said, Brad, I don't mind losing, but I want to lose my way. Right. Mm -hmm. One sentence, and he walked away. He didn't embarrass me in front of the team, mm -hmm. but he let me know that right. I had really screwed up. <laughs> and part of being a leader is, is providing feedback to people. Right. Most of it's positive, encouraging, supportive, but then there's times you got to give real direct, like, hey, that wasn't that wasn't right. So, got it. Um, I took. There's a lot of other things, but that mm -hmm. that memory, that statement, one sentence. Wow. Powerful. Yeah. That is. That's, that's very cool. Good stuff. Yeah, you, uh, good coaches know that they have to care enough to confront. Right. And uh, we yeah. talk about that, and we found that it seems like um, it's getting more and more difficult to do that with people today. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a different um, reaction to maybe constructive criticism today than there was. Right. No one likes feedback. Nobody. Uh, it's right. yeah. Some people don't like the hearing the truth. Right. right. Uh, I, I, I cry. Yeah. Cross and I cry a lot when Steve. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> We start crying and Steve says, get out of the office. But, but we take it, we take it. You know, there's one but don't, thing. But don't you think athletics prepares you for feedback? Because it, you it get sure being yelled at. Yeah, sure it does. Part, Absolutely. Right? Yeah, so sure it thicker yeah. skin. Yeah. It, it's a, it's, I have a little segment. I have a book coming out soon. And I have a little segment in my book that, that says that, you know, in, in this day, generation today, I don't think that people are acceptable in regards to a culture getting in your face and shouting instructions to you. You know, we just took that every day in practice. That, yeah. that happened all the time. Now, 
if that happens to a kid, he'll go home and tell his parents. His parents will be back to speak to the coach, and it'll be all this confrontation. But, Cross, you know? don't you think also, and, and you're a guy that could take it. I mean, I know, hey, you okay. and I know each other pretty well. Right. Hey. You, know, you could take it no matter what, hey. you know. But don't you think leaders like Brad and Steve, the difference for them with the people they lead is they show that they care about their folks. Yes. And when I know somebody cares about me, I take it much differently right, than right. somebody that I don't feel right. cares about me. Brad, would you agree with that? Right, you have to convey uh, to people that you care about them more than the bottom line. Yes. Uh, bottom line's important. Sure. Because that's, but that's how you really develop, the deep relationships are really what yes. are strong yeah, relationships. Right. So if, you have right. a, if you have really strong relationships, that's the key if you don't, we all have people that um, that have, we've reported to that maybe are really good technically, but maybe not as strong. Not a hundred percent. Right, hundred percent. I think those situations that leaders struggle with more. Now you have to know stuff. You have to be competent. It's right. going to be back right. slapper right. and fist bump. Right, right. You right. have to have some yeah. some yeah. substance. Some substance. Yes. Yeah, sure. yeah, the people thing is what differentiates. Yeah, for sure. But that's that's one great thing about our boss, uh, boss man Steve Taylor. You know, he is a people's person, and he's not only a piece of people's person. But he's a great leader. You know what I mean. And so Thanks, with that, man. with that combination, you know, I just have the ultimate. We all do have the all, ultimate you got this respect for us. Yeah, no, okay. that's great. Oh you, man, you know what I mean. Very nice. But can I bring up just one last thing, guys? And then I promise I won't say anything <laughs> else. Uh, let me just illustrate how God works in, in our life, right? I have met you a couple times, and as you know, and we we spoke before. But I never realized the story you told me this uh, this morning about the University of Tennessee. And I'm not going to uh, elaborate on it. Say to our audience what you told me this morning. Well, sure. Well, when I when I came in, obviously I saw right. you, and I wanted to. I never did tell you that. You know? no, right. We haven't seen each other in a long time. But right. uh, when I was in high school, I went to the University of Tennessee basketball camp. It was a national camp, and it was uh, 76, 77, and. Terry was there. Yeah, uh, we did. It didn't do it on the campus. Right. We did it at right. Nazarene College right, or something right, like right. that. But uh, I actually wanted to go to University of Tennessee. Right. It was Ernie Grunfeld, yes. Bernard King, yes. and you. Yes. And so I wanted to go. I wasn't good enough. Oh no, I, I wasn't I good enough. But I was. Right. I was aiming. Uh, right. But it was. It was a nice uh, connection. Right. To be able to share that with you. And our great legendary coach Stu Aberdeen yeah. conducted the camp. <laughs> yes. And he went to Marshall, and I yes. went to Marshall my senior year. Oh wow. To, to that camp. I right. stopped going to Tennessee because right. I think I was, I was following him. Right, right. The point I'm making, God is so good. He is so good. And, you know, I, I have been hanging out a little bit. I went, went up past the rock, so he's, 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 he's <laughs> coach uh, be preaching on, yeah. on Sunday. <laughs> preaching on Sunday. We're going to have a new show starting on Sundays with uh, Terry and Pastor Brock, right? There you go. Good stuff. Good so, God's brought us full circle, and, and you're here today. Yeah. So, Thank you very much. So I always like to ask guests if there is uh, maybe one particular moment, especially guests that have been involved with children in schools. Um, mm -hmm. There's so many times, and, and obviously we've talked about coaches that have made an impact yeah. or teachers that have made an impact, but with your profession and, and all you've done within the schools, is there a story or is there a student um, that maybe stands out to you that it's just a, you know, a great feel good story or a success story that, uh, we can wrap up here with. I've had thousands of students. Sure. And so, just to pick I, one you know, stuff, I right? <laughs> I, can I can tell you this. Um, I started as a special education teacher. I work with uh, students with multiple disabilities. A lot of times, they had behavioral issues, and uh, my I spent a lot of time as a superintendent talking about the kids that were going to the Ivy League schools and the top performers. And but my heart has always been with those students that travel the Tupper Road and the teachers that are working with them. So when I was superintendent, when I visited schools, I tried to get as many classrooms as I could. I always made sure that I went to uh, and connected with the special needs students and, and, and kids because they um, are kind of my true north and was right, my starting right. point. And throughout wow. my career, that was always really, really important to me. Yeah. So important, absolutely. No, that's great stuff. Tom, any other questions? No, you can go ahead and wrap it up, boss. No, well, it's uh, so great to have you in studio today. Like yes. we said, uh, where can people find uh, your podcast and find out more about what you're doing too? Brad Rieger podcast in the arena. Okay. Um, yeah. Obviously, I'm the CEO at, uh, at Cooper Smith and mm -hmm. um, they can just do Cooper Smith CEO and find out the great things we're doing at uh, 
and that's a great name for the podcast, the Teddy Roosevelt thing, right? Yes. Put yourself yeah, in the right. arena. A lot of people yes. don't understand. Yep. He would always say, put yourself in the arena, right. and people thought, what are you talking about, playing football, or what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. He says, no, put yourself out there. You're going to be criticized. Yeah. People are going to come at you, but you're going to be better off by putting yourself out that's there. Yeah. Terry and Steve do that every day. You put yourself out there, and you know you get good things, and then somebody throws a pie at you or something. You know, It just works yeah, that way. That's true. That works that way. Yeah. That works that way. Steve, thanks for having me, and thanks for the great community work that you and your team do. It's, it's really, it, the business is important, but yeah. community, family, friends are more Absolutely. important. I think that you uh, exemplify that. Well, thanks, thank you Brad. very much. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate you having me today. It was great talking with you. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Steve Taylor's Community Star. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.